Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the statue. This statue, or bust, is said to have been made by a man named William, who enjoyed making these sorts of things out of clay. Unfortunately, however, legend goes that this specific statue was made on the same day that William was crushed to death during a tragic work accident. A co-worker of his who showed up to work the following day found that this statue was still there, so he took it home with him. For a while, he kept the statue hidden, but when he took it out to display it, things started to go awry. It started with just a heavy and uninviting feeling, but soon things escalated. He began to hear doors slamming on their own, only to go and find them wide open. If anything was placed next to the statue, the next time he would find it completely shattered, and at one point he found the statue in a position that he never placed it in. He finally had the last straw when he saw a dark, shadowy figure, or a sort of mist, moving around near where he placed the statue. After this, he was so spooked he had a friend list the item for him on eBay because he just simply needed to get rid of it. In our number 9 spot today, we have Aluru Rock. Aluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to the land. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked to not take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Other than the bad karma and just in general feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and sometimes even the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often, at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 8 spot today, we have the beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tolman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year, they bought a second-hand set of bunk beds for their kids for a hundred bucks, but as it would turn out, they bought much more than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that, despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on by themselves, they would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in the landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number 7 spot today, we have the Crying Children paintings. These paintings were a series created by an Italian painter who was known as Giovanni Breglin, but his name was really Bruno Amarillo. Bruno was born in Venice in 1911 and fought in World War II, which ended up being the inspiration for a lot of his paintings. During his time in the war, he saw a lot of suffering, and this is where he got the idea for the series of Crying Children paintings. After the paintings were sold, there began to be reports of fires in all of the places where the paintings were held. While this could have just been a strange coincidence, the weirdest part is that the paintings always remained intact while everything else around them was burned. This quickly became the most talked about thing and was on the front of every newspaper, and the paintings quickly gained the nickname Diablo. It caused the paintings to end up being replicated and mass produced, but none of the replicas hold quite the same powers as the originals. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Goddess Statue. The Goddess of Death statue is is also known as the Woman from the Lem. This artifact was made out of limestone, and it was created somewhere around 3500 BC and was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years, it has belonged to many different families who all have been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner, and after four years, death began to come to him and his family as well. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family finally got a hold of it, several several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum because it is of course an ancient relic, but legend goes that the museum curator who initially took care of it died within a year of receiving it. So maybe the curse lives on. In our number 5 spot today we have the goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum, but it was a museum of specifically haunted things, so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy, which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? All the above? 
Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay because why not? And the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay. What kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be perfectly honest. In our number four spot today, we have the Surrey Ghost Car. On December 11th, 2002, a call came into the Surrey Police Department. The caller reported that they had just seen a car lose control and run off the road and then presumably crash. It was, of course, an emergency call, but not necessarily anything out of the ordinary. That was until authorities got to the location and realized that they couldn't find any evidence of a crash. They kept searching and ended up finding a maroon colored car that was nose down in a ditch nearby. But this car was covered in so much undergrowth that it must have been here for months. This meant that somehow this crash went undetected for five months, and worst of all, so did the body that lay nearby. Using dental records, they were able to identify the body as a man who had been wanted for robbery since July of that year. It is said that the sighting of the car leaving the road was a ghostly replay of the events that had taken place five months prior. In our number three spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum, which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you, lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay list, the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique. Just this one time. In our number two spot today, we have the Nightmare Doll. Haunted dolls like Annabelle and even Robert get a lot of hype, but they certainly aren't the only dolls with stories of curses and hauntings behind them. This Nightmare Doll was listed for sale on eBay, and according to the seller, the doll is possessed by a Dibuk, which is a malicious demon or entity. The seller of the doll is actually someone who apparently specializes in selling these sort of paranormal items that no one wants anymore. The seller explained that the owner of the doll bought it at an antique shop, and while they did tell her about what the doll held, she didn't know what the word meant, so she took it anyways. Soon after purchasing it, she realized that anyone who came into contact with the doll was then plagued with terrifying nightmares and occurrences of these sort of shadow people. She only could handle this all for a couple of months before she handed the doll over for it to be sold and moved far, far away from her. In our number one spot today, we have the carving. This is a carving that was sold on eBay in 2013, which the sellers claimed had been in their family for over 60 years. It was originally found by the seller's grandparents in the attic of their home. This was back in the 1950s, and when it was found, the grandparents asked the original owners of the home where it had come from. They explained that it was a gift from a prisoner who was said to have carved it. The seller explained in their post that, quote, anyone who comes in contact with it seems to feel strange or creeped out by it. The statue mostly didn't cause too much harm, that was, until the seller tried to put it on display in their home. Once it was taken out of an old box and placed in a cabinet, strange occurrences began. They said that, quote, I began to experience the television turning off and on, lights coming on in rooms no one was in, the kids' toys coming on in the middle of the night in their room at 3 a.m. At the end of the day, despite the troubles this person had with the statue, they still ended up selling it for 85 bucks. Not a bad deal. Go rid of a demon and gain some cash for it. Number 10. Space Balls over the course of decades, humans have begun to clog up the Earth's surrounding area with space junk. Defunct projects, satellites, broken or discarded pieces of spacecrafts, it will become a serious problem at some point and it's beginning to show. There have been many instances now of strange metallic balls crashing into the ground and being found in multiple countries. Mexico, Spain, Vietnam, Namibia, Australia, and many others. They hurtle towards the Earth and some have crashed a little too close for comfort. Most of these mysterious objects seem to just be a auxiliary fuel tanks from satellites that were discarded or crashed nearby, and they fell off early, landing in a completely different place than was planned. But some of these, like the one in Mexico, still require more investigation, as they don't match any of the parts that we would have expected to be entering our atmosphere. This one even has an antenna, and reportedly fell from the sky while making strange noises, but was not accompanied by any fire, like a lot of debris entering the atmosphere would have. So where did these things come from then? Number 9. WTF 
In 2013, the Catalina Sky Survey at the University of Arizona spotted an object in the night sky, and it seemed to have some weird properties. The object didn't move as though it was solid like rock, but it seemed to possibly be hollow. And it had a density of about 10% that of water, and it seemed to be about 6.5 feet in diameter large enough to house a person. But this didn't match any of the space junk that space agencies had been tracking for the previous years, and adding even more to the confusion, the object seemed to disappear from sight, and it was not seen again until two years later, when it was officially given the name WT1190F, or WTF for short. Pretty fitting. Video and photos were taken of the object's re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, which was a scientific feat on its own, but the object was never recovered. It is assumed that it burned up from the immense heat of re-entry, but many people believe that it crashed into the ocean and whatever was inside was either captured or lies in wait at the bottom of the sea. Like those UFOs NASA admits that they found. Remember those? That was crazy. Number eight struck by a space rock. All right, we've got two stories here, and you can either think of them as the result of a curse, or karma, or cosmic coincidence, but either way, these two women had a bad day. In 2001, Lottie Williams was exercising in a park in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when she looked up and saw a great ball of fire in the air. It was a rocket coming back towards Earth. She watched it approach, and as it got larger in the sky, she expressed her worry to her friends, but then it broke up into pieces, and it was no longer visible to her. A few moments later, she felt what she described as a tap on her shoulder, and then something fell to the ground. This small blackened piece of metal had fallen from the rocket and just grazed her, and it could have been a lot worse, but she walked away being the first person to be hit by man-made space debris. But another woman was not as lucky. On November 30th, 1954, Ann Hodges was napping in her Alabama home when a piece of meteorite crashed through her roof and struck her in the side. It left a three foot wide hole in her roof and also left a massive bruise on her thigh and hand where she was hit. Luckily, the damages were only surface level, and though she went to the hospital the next night, it was because of her stress, not the injury. But if the space rock had been a few inches to the side, Anne would not have lived to tell the tale as the first person to be struck by a meteorite. I'm not sure if she's cursed with extremely bad luck or has really good luck. I'll leave that up to you. Number seven, Skylab. Launched by NASA as the first American space station, Skylab was cursed with issues from the moment it launched. The station strapped to a Saturn V rocket sustained severe damage during its deployment, including the loss of the station's micrometeoroid shield and one of its main solar panels, requiring it to have the first ever repair to an object in space, which is pretty cool. But it was again hit with problems when one of the pieces destabilized from orbit earlier than expected and crashed back to Earth. But it doesn't stop there. Due to increased solar activity, Skylab actually ended up falling towards Earth a year earlier than it was supposed to. There was supposed to be a shuttle mission to boost it back into orbit, but the shuttle wasn't ready in time. In an international media frenzy, the Skylab crash was everywhere. People had shirts with targets, contests were made to bring pieces of the wreckage for cash prizes, and people waited for the show. Due to a 4% calculation error on re-entry, the station did not burn up as quickly as expected, and pieces fell into Australia only 300 miles from Perth in an almost completely unpopulated area. Man, talk about a crash and burn. These scientists missed the mark so many times, it's impressive the thing even hit Earth. Number 6. 300 million year old machine part in 2013, a Russian man named Dmitry was adding coal to a fire when he noticed something strange. A shiny piece of metal was sticking out of the rock, and when he broke open the piece of coal, he found what seemed to be a piece of a metal bar with teeth, like a piece of a gear. When analyzed, it was found to be made of aluminum with about 3% magnesium, an alloy that is not generally produced today. Not only that, but further examination shows machining marks, implying that it's a man-made piece, and it's similar to those that we may find in a modern microscope or other small machinery. But no one can explain how a seemingly man-made part appears in a piece of coal that was 300 million years old. So was this thing a remnant of a past unknown civilization? Maybe something from a time traveler or alien? One explanation is that it could have fallen to Earth from a meteorite all that time ago, but it wouldn't explain the fact that it seems man-made. This little hunk of metal continues to baffle scientists today. Number five, nuclear nuisance. 
The Cosmos 954 reconnaissance satellite launched by the Soviet Union in 1977 had some major issues. The launch went fine. Unlike Skylab, its deployment also went off without a hitch, and this long-term orbital satellite seemed like another mission success for the Soviet space program. It was meant to be circling the globe for years and years, but just three months later, the North American Aerospace Defense Command noticed the satellite making erratic maneuvers, changing the altitude of its orbit by up to 50 miles. And in secret meetings, the Soviet officials warned their US counterparts that they had lost control over the vehicle, and the system, which was intended to propel the spent nuclear reactor core into a safe disposal orbit, had failed. And just four months after its launch, it fell towards the Earth, right over Canada's Northwest Territories. The Soviets claimed that it had completely disintegrated upon re-entry, but that was not the case, as we discovered a 600 kilometer path of debris leading through the country. And a huge portion of it was radioactive because they failed to launch the reactor out. We Canadians began Operation Morning Light, a recovery effort that lasted over a year and for which we billed the Soviet Union six million dollars, though they only ever paid us three. Many small pieces of debris were collected as well as 12 large portions of the satellite, only two of which were not radioactive. Number four, proof of panspermia. The theory of panspermia is that life did not naturally begin on Earth, but that it began with microbes stuck in space ice that fell to Earth on meteorites. And the amount of debate around this topic is huge, and we have a few examples that may just prove the theory. The Polonarua meteorite was one that fell in Sri Lanka in 2012, and meteorites are always a good find, but this one was different. 12 days after it was witnessed falling through the sky, a scientist published a paper stating that after studying some electron micrographs, his team discovered fossil fossilized diatoms, microscopic phytoplankton inside the meteorite. In addition, his team of scientists reported in a separate article that they are, they are certain that it is a meteorite that originated from a comet that also contained living diatoms. The microbes were remarkably similar to those found on Earth, leading to a debate on whether it was simply contaminated from the Earth's surface. But there is another example with even stronger proof of microscopic alien life. In 2018, a meteorite landed on a frozen lake in Michigan, and when it was examined, thousands of organic compounds that were formed billions of years ago were found. It helped that the quick recovery, along with the cold temperature, kept the water inside frozen for studying. Research is still being done, but this find has thrown the scientific world for a loop. Hopefully the organisms don't leave us with some alien curse or disease. Number three, the Chelyabinsk meteor. Many of us will remember the 2013 meteor that rocked the world. At 20 meters in diameter, it was the largest natural object to enter our atmosphere since the Tunguska event, which destroyed a wide, remote, forested, and, and very sparsely populated area of Serbia. The Chelyabinsk meteor also is the only meteor confirmed to have resulted in many injuries, though they were all from indirect causes. There are many videos of the event and they are truly terrifying, especially when you learn that the meteor was completely undetected until it entered our atmosphere, which caused worldwide panic. The flash as it began to burn up was brighter than the sun, and when it exploded midair, the energy output was equivalent to the atomic weapon used on Hiroshima, sending out a massive shockwave that damaged buildings and was felt and heard for hundreds of miles. All of the 1500 100 people injured were hurt while running or from broken glass or other indirect factors of the meteor. There was even another meteor which was detected to have a close approach on the same day, which was 10 meters larger and flew by us only 16 hours later. Man, February 15th, 2013 was a busy day for meteors. Number two, Oumuamua. Discovered by the University of Hawaii's PanSTARRS-1 telescope in 2017, Oumuamua is the first known interstellar object to visit our solar system. It was originally classified as a comet, but there were no signs of cometary activity after we witnessed it slingshot past the sun at a blistering speed of 196,000 miles per hour, or 87.3 kilometers per second. It was briefly classified as an asteroid until new measurements found it was accelerating slightly, which is very strange for any interstellar body. This massive cigar-shaped object is nearly a quarter mile long, or 400 meters, and its elongated shape is unlike anything we've witnessed in our solar system. Observation has shown that it may have come from the star system of Vega, though with the speed it was moving, it would have taken over 300 million years to make the journey to our solar system, and Vega was nowhere near that position at that time, leading to further questions. Many scientists believe that this could actually be 
an alien superstructure as its strange journey and acceleration are studied more and more. Paul Kodas, manager of the Center for Near Earth Object Studies at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said that it's a strange visitor from a faraway star system, shaped like nothing we've ever seen in our own solar system neighborhood. Whether it's just an interstellar asteroid or someone coming to see what's up with Earth, we may never know, as it's being launched away from us after making a slingshot maneuver around our sun, the angle and trajectory of which some use as proof as the object being controlled or even driven by something. And finally, we reach our number one, the Hypatia Stone. The Hypatia Stone is one of the single greatest astronomical discoveries that we have ever made. Found in the Sahara Desert by Ali A. Barakat, this is no ordinary meteorite, but one that contains the remnants of a rare type of supernova. Some have even described it as a supernova in a bottle. Named after the ancient mathematician and astronomer Hypatia, who is the first female scholar in her field to have her life and accomplishments recorded, overcoming sexism in the process, scientists are still learning more about its origins. It's believed that the stone was born in what is known as a Type 1a supernova, a rare kind of supernova where a dying star or white dwarf begins to leach energy off of a nearby star and regains energy in the process. These so-called vampire stars circle each other until the white dwarf has recovered enough energy to reignite the stellar reaction actions and explodes in a massive cloud of dust and pure energy, shooting things imbued with strange elements out into the ether. Measuring the metals found inside the stone is how we verified that it came from this kind of supernova, and that it crashed to Earth nearly 28 million years ago after being launched through space by the explosion. Having a supernova in our hands has helped us answer so many questions about the physics of space, but if you ask me if there was one interstellar item that could have an alien curse, it's the rock that contains pieces of a rare supernova. Sounds like something an alien from Doctor Who would need to power their death machine or something. In our number 10 spot, we have the Ring of Sylvanius. Anyone a fan of the Lord of the Rings? I'm a mega fan, so if you are, reach out to me and let's be friends. But anyways, you may not know this, but the Ring exists. Yep, it's real. Allegedly, J.R.R. Tolkien was inspired by a ring called the Vein Ring or the Ring of Sylvanius that was said to be cursed. It was a gold ring dating to the 4th century AD England, and it was the property of a man named Sylvanius in 1785. It was apparently stolen, and Sylvanius put a curse on it. Eventually, it became the property of the Shute family, and their property eventually became a national trust property, and the ring is on display there. In 1929, a man named Sir Mortimer Wheeler discovered the curse upon it and discussed the details of the curse, such as the god invoked, with a very famous man by the name of J.R.R. Tolkien, thus birthed the story about the one powerful ring. Man, if there was one person dead that I could meet, it would be him. He created his own language, folks. I wish I could pick his brain on his thoughts about life. Anyways, this object is locked away in a display case, so we should be good. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can watch more content like this. In our number nine spot, we have the Unlucky Mummy. The Unlucky Mummy is an artifact that people legit believed started World War One. Oh, and the object was rumored to have sunk the Titanic. That's a very, very unlucky mummy. The Unlucky Mummy is an ancient Egyptian artifact that's either a painted wooden mummy board or an inner coffin lid that's now located in a British museum. It was originally found in Thebes and can be dated by its shape and style to around 950 to 900 BC. A British journalist, obsessed with the fact that he thought it had magical powers, analyzed it for some time and after three years at only age 36, he mysteriously passed away. People believed that the unlucky mummy was the reason. Wow, it's so wild to think about how different people's thoughts were back then compared to how people think now. Did people back then have crazy imaginations or are we too unimaginative and logical now that we miss the magic. We'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number 8 spot we have the Hexam Heads. The Hexam Heads were a pair of small stone heads about 6 centimeters high found in 1971 in a British town called Hexham by two boys by the name of Colin and Leslie Robson. They were digging in a garden when they stumbled across them and they brought them inside. Right away, paranormal phenomena began to happen in their house. One boy's hair was pulled at 
night, the heads would mysteriously be in new places, bottles were being thrown across the room, and their mother saw a man that was seemingly half man, half goat leaving the house. When the artifacts were given to a Celtic artifact expert, she and many others noticed a half man, half wolf leave the house or move about the house on many occasions. The woman also reported the feeling of a cold presence and her office door opening with no wind and the cause remained unknown. The heads got passed around a lot until suddenly they vanished and their whereabouts still remain unknown. Dun, dun, dun. In our number 7 spot we have the crying boy. The crying boy is a fascinating phenomenon. This is a mass produced print of a painting by an Italian painter by the name of Giovanni Bergolin and the painting is literally of a boy crying. This painting was widely distributed in the 50s but in the 80s a theory around the painting began to arise and people started to think that the painting was cursed. On September the 5th 1985 a British newspaper reported that a firefighter had stated that undamaged copies of the painting were being found frequently at sites of burned houses. Of course people began to believe that it was the paintings that were behind it because they would somehow come out untouched. It was later learned that the paintings did have varnish on them that made them fire retardant. However, the boy in the paintings was later discovered, a man named Don Bonillo, and apparently he is tied to several fires including the painter's studio. Yikes, okay well this is scary. <laughs> I hope all of these paintings were somehow disposed of. I'm assuming not by fire, but in some way. But if not, then they need to be locked away in a fireproof cabinet of some sort. In our number six spot, we have the Bassano vase. The Bassano vase is a vase that needs to be locked away, and we need to also throw away the key because it is terrifying. I know, I know. It seems like an object that is just not threatening at all. I mean, come on. It's a vase. Something you put beautiful flowers in. Anyways, the vase is believed to be from the 15th century in Napoli, Italy. Apparently anyone that was ever the owner of it has died. I mean, that is inevitable, right? We're all mortal humans. No. They died within a few months of having it. The original owner apparently died with it in her arms. The vase was passed between a bunch of hands in the 80s before it disappeared and no one is quite sure where it is located at this moment. In our number 5 spot we have the bronze lady. Okay, so this next one can't necessarily be locked up because it's a giant bronze statue, but I'm putting it on this list so y'all can have caution if you ever go near it. Okay, this statue is located in the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. Yes, the famous cemetery. You may be going there to see ghosts, but apparently the bronze lady is who you should be watching out for. She allegedly wanders the cemetery grounds at night, terrifying anyone who may have entered the grounds. They say that you can hear her weeping if you get close to her, and if you sit on her lap, she'll cry tears of blood. They say if you insult her and hit her in the face, you will be cursed for life. Who the heck is doing that and why? Apparently many a visitor has have ran from the cemetery after an encounter with her. Damn. In our number four spot, we have the Robert doll. Well, right off the bat, I want to lock this one up because of its name. This sounds like the creepiest doll ever. Not that there's anything wrong with the name Robert. I even have a cousin named Robert. It's just Robert and doll together. Sounds creepy. I don't know. Anyways, looking at this doll, I have to say that the creepiness of the name totally matches it. This must be top five creepiest dolls ever, but I wouldn't know. I don't watch a lot of doll movies, and it's been a long long time since I've played with them. I do miss my Barbie days, not gonna lie. The doll was made in Germany and purchased in 1904 and given to a boy named Robert Otto. The legend is that the doll has supernatural powers. After Otto passed away and the doll was passed around, people said that the doll caused car accidents, broken bones, job loss, divorce, and people that visited the museum that it was eventually put in would supposedly experience post-visit misfortunes for failing to respect Robert. Whatever that means. I bet you they were insulting Robert like the bronze lady statue. Who are all these disrespectful animals? In our number three spot, we have the Hope Diamond. This is a very, very beautiful diamond that unfortunately is cursed. So much so that no one should own it. I just realized something. If you were someone that owned such a crazy expensive diamond, would you not do whatever you could to protect it and make sure it was not stolen, such as create a rumor around it possibly being cursed so no one would try to steal it? I mean, I probably 
being led. I wonder if perhaps that's how this started. Anyways, allegedly the Hope Diamond is cursed and has brought about a lot of death in its time. It was extracted in the 17th century in India. Owners of the Hope Diamond were either killed or experienced extreme misfortune. So after a while, it just gained a poor reputation. It's most likely cursed. In our number two spot, we have the cursed ring. This is a ring that needs to be locked up in a vault pronto because it is absolutely cursed. It was once called the Destiny Ring by a shopkeeper who did not want to sell it, but apparently actor Rudolf Valentino had to have it. It was the 1920s, and after buying this ring, a series of unfortunate events happened to him before he ended up passing away. A series of unfortunate events actually happened to all who obtained the ring for many years until the ring was bought in an auction in 2017, and there has been no word as to whether the owner of it is still okay. Why oh why was this ring not thrown into a vault? I will never understand people. In our number one spot we have the Belleroy Chair of Death. You may be surprised to hear that this is not the only chair that supposedly brings about death. But the other chair is so widely talked about that I thought I would talk about this one on this list. This chair, the Belleroy Chair, is a chair that's from the Belleroy Mansion that is believed to be very haunted. It's a 200 year old blue chair that sits in the drawing room called the Blue Room. The chair apparently was once owned by Napoleon and it was made in the 18th century by a person that practices sorcery. So how is this chair bad, you may ask? Well, the legend around this chair is quite fascinating. Allegedly, a red mist floats around the chair and people say that the mist is a spirit named Amelia. This spirit allegedly sucks the breath out of anyone that sits in the chair, sucking out their life force and they pass away a few days later. This literally sounds like a part of the plot of Hocus Pocus. I bet you they got their inspiration for the movie from this. Coming up at our number 10 spot, we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is a place in St. Francisville, Louisiana that is known for being extremely haunted. There are so many ghost sightings and photographs, and in particular, there is a mirror where people tend to see ghosts in. People believe that the mirror holds the spirits of a mother and her young ones that passed away in the home. Apparently, a handprint continues to appear in one of the corners of the mirror, even though it continues to be wiped away by staff. Whoa. The mirror is definitely haunted and cursed. In our number nine spot, we have the Koh-i-Noor Diamond. The Koh-i-Noor Diamond has been said to be cursed for centuries, but more specifically for males. It is said that only God or women can wear it with impunity. All else who wear it will be cursed. It is said to bring about great wealth to all women and great, great misfortune to all men. It dates back thousands of years, but it is currently in the hands of the British royal family, and it has been worn by Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. I wonder how people started thinking that the crown was cursed. I bet you some woman thousands of years ago was mad at her husband and convinced him that the crown was cursed so she could have it all to herself. <laughs> Like they say, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. In our number eight spot, we have The Crying Boy. This is a painting of a boy that is crying that is said to be haunted. I had never heard of it before today, but apparently this painting is widely known around the world and on the internet as possibly being cursed. The painting is literally of a boy that's really crying, like a waterfall of tears is falling down his face. I could see why people would feel something when looking at it as the energy is quite strong and of course sad. Anyways, regardless, this painting was made by a Spanish artist named Giovanni Bragolin and the painting was actually mass produced after the war in England and also so many homes caught on fire after purchasing this painting and the painting seemingly survived each time. People believed it to be cursed because, well, the painting never burned down with the houses. But many years later, the paintings were analyzed and it was proven that they had been coated with a fire repellent. It still doesn't explain all of the fires in the first place. Like, why were there so many fires after people purchased this painting? So that's why people are still very weary on this painting and believe it to be cursed. In our number seven spot, we have the Delphi Purple Sapphire. This stone is also known as the Cursed Amethyst because it's probably cursed and you should probably not touch it. This stone was apparently stolen from the Temple of Indra in 1857 and then brought to England by Colonel 
W. Ferris. It is said that after this, he lost all of his fortune and received an enormous amount of bad luck. Any person after him that came into contact with the stone came upon some bad luck. Allegedly, a singer lost her voice after having the stone. Whoa. It now rests in the London Natural History Museum, and even the person that brought it there said they experienced a horrible storm while en route. Coincidence? I think not. In our number six spot, we have the Hope Diamond. So many cursed jewels in the world, it almost, almost makes you believe in the possibility that it can hold energy. But wait, everything is energy, so of course it can. We could probably go down a rabbit hole here, but whatever, I'm gonna stop myself. Anyways, the Hope Diamond is a large blue gemstone that is worth approximately $250 million. This is one of the most known cursed jewels around the world, as it has reportedly caused great misfortune and misery to whomever wears it. The reportings of misfortune date all the way back to 1653 in India, when a French merchant took the gem from one of the eyes of a Hindu idol, and eventually Eventually, this merchant was eaten to death by dogs. Misfortune may be an understatement in this case. It's a good thing most of us will never get anywhere close to this object in our lifetime. <laughs> In our number five spot, we have the Blarney Stone. This is a stone located in Cork, Ireland, and it is believed to be quite powerful. Kissing the stone is said to bring a person luck, but if there is any removal of the stone, you know, even by taking a few pieces of the stone, the person who has removed it will be cursed with bad luck. Misfortunes such as loss of jobs, financial lows, and depression have been reported and associated with those that have taken parts of the stone. Apparently these parts that have been taken have been mailed back after they have felt the wrath of this curse. That's pretty funny when you think about it. <laughs> you would think mailing it wouldn't do any good unless there's someone there to put the stone back. I doubt there's some kind of employee that's you know unwrapping people's mail and putting the pieces of the stone back and if there is such a person, even if they're a volunteer, bless them. In our number four spot we have Elmo. Yes, Elmo, the character from one of the most iconic shows called Sesame Street, is known to be a cursed doll. Honestly, <laughs> I heard about this one and instantly it, it checked out for me because my brother had an Elmo doll and it would just start talking randomly and we totally thought it was haunted. So it's comforting to know that other people had strange occurrences with it. Apparently there is a story about a boy that loved Elmo and was gifted it and a few days after receiving it, the Elmo started saying, kill James, continuously. Whew, that's horrifying. <laughs> Definitely stay away from the Elmo doll, just saying. In our number three spot, we have a piece of all Yuru rock. Yet another cursed rock to stay away from. This is a large sandstone rock formation in the North Territory, Australia, and apparently this place is sacred for the indigenous people of the area. They advise that no one should take anything from the site, no small rocks or pieces or anything. But of course, do people always listen when told to not do something? No. The people that have taken pieces of the formation though have reported experiencing severe illness afterwards, bad luck, deaths, and terrible breakups. It feels like we've been too conditioned by movies to believe in any real magic that we forget about where writers of movies get their inspiration from. In our number two spot, we have the Belcourt Castle Chairs. There is a summer cottage in Rhode Island, and apparently in the ballroom, there are a number of cursed chairs. The idea of cursed chairs just seems so silly to me. Out of all the objects in the world, why a bunch of chairs? Well, as silly as it sounds, there have been too many sightings and experiences to count that proves this theory. People have reported feeling chills up and down their spine, and people have reported feeling a strange sensation of energy around them. Also, it has been reported by many, a feeling of being pushed down from the chairs by an unseen force. I kind of want to go there and experience that. Anyone else? But I suppose if we will be forever cursed, then maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> In our number one spot, we have the haunted wedding dress. 
I'm sure there are many, many haunted wedding dresses around the world. Heck, I would say any marriage that ends in divorce, the wedding dress is probably not high vibes. But this one in particular from a girl named Anna Baker is known to be quite haunted. Anna Baker was from a rich family and in 1849, she fell in love with an iron worker, aka someone of lower breeding, as they used to say, a lower class chap. <laughs> Anyways, she was forbidden to marry him and Anna had already bought her wedding dress, oh no! Allegedly she was heartbroken and she decided that she would never marry anyone ever again and she ended up passing away single as a maid in 1914. Her house eventually became a museum and they say that her old wedding dress is haunted and many people have reportedly seen the wedding dress moving in its glass box. Yeah, it's definitely cursed.